Well, praise the name of the Lord. Ha <laughs> ha. Let us go back to the old stomping ground. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, 1. Let us look at Hebrews 11, 1. Faith, the substance. That is the title of our message. Faith is substance. We preached on this last couple of weeks ago. Is that right? Amen. Yes, we did. Faith, the substance. You see, the reason that we have to continue hearing the word and hearing the word, because faith does come by hearing and hearing and hearing. We don't want to ever forget the word, because if we hear it one time or two times, we're liable to forget. The word, but when he tell us, don't let it depart from your eyes. Let not the word of God depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and they are health to all of their flesh. Want to always keep the word of God before our eyes. Keep hearing it over and over and over your flesh. It's not going to like it, but your spirit man will love it. The devil will not like it, but the Holy Spirit will love it. Why? Because when you keep it before your eyes and the word continuously coming out of your mouth, then the Holy Spirit can manifest those things that you've been saying to you. He'll be able to manifest it. But if you ain't got nothing coming out of your mouth, and you don't have anything going in your eyes, there's nothing for him to work with because the spirit and the word work together to produce whatever it is that you're saying as long as it is the word of God. Yeah, he's not going to just perform your word, but he will perform the word of God. Let's turn to Hebrews 11 chapter here. Let's look at Number one, he said, now faith is the substance. First of all, let us talk about substance. He said, faith is the substance. And substance, we said, is physical matter from which something is made or consists. That's what substance is. Meaning that you can feel, taste, touch. It is what you can contact in the natural realm. Okay? You can touch this bottle here. You can touch this pen. He said faith will cause this to become something that you can touch. Isn't that awesome? Your faith will cause the manifestation of whatever it is that you're hoping for to come into manifestation. It will cause the manifestation. Faith will. So that sounds like faith is alive and is an action word. Faith is the substance of the things that you're hoping for. Now, what are the things that you're hoping for? What are the things that you're hoping for? He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of the things that are not seen. What is it that you are hoping for? Is it just something just off the, out of the clear blue sky? Well, God is only going to look over his word to perform it. Okay. He's not going to look over some stuff that you are trying to pull out of the sky. And 10 oil wells and all that stuff. No, you can't believe him for that. Yeah. He's going to perform his word. Let us look at Jeremiah 23, 28. Jeremiah 23, 28. You see, hope is your confidence, your trust, and your faith, and your assurance. That's what hope is. And that is what you have when you go in the word of God and find the promise 
and then hold fast to it. Let us look at this. The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, okay, I didn't say that. The prophet said this. He who has my word, let him do what? Speak my word. Speak my word. How often? Faithfully, me nonstop, actually, for as long as you are alive, you keep speaking the word of God because the word of God is going to bring forth substance. Okay? That's what it's going to do. It's going to bring forth, if you speak it faithfully, he said, it's going to materialize for you. That's what he's saying. Let he who has my word speak my word faithfully. And only his word, because that's what he's going to perform. Now, how do we use faith to bring into existence those things that you hope for? All right. How do we use it? Because everybody wants to know, how can we get, Father, I see where you have promised me this, you have promised me that, but how do I get it in my life so I can enjoy it? Because he, he has given us all things, he said, that pertains to life and godliness so we can enjoy in this life, not when we get there. He wants us to enjoy, enjoy it here. So how do we get the word of God to manifest itself or to create itself while we are here? Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. This is what we have to do. If faith will bring our hope into existence, the things that we can taste and touch and feel, we have to be Doing what? Speaking. We have to be saying something. We have to be saying the, what God said about our hope. Remember? He said, faith is the substance of things that is hope for. So your hope is for whatever it is that God has promised you. That is your hope. When you go in the word here and you find where God says this is yours and you can have this, that's your hope. That is your hope. But if faith going to bring it into existence so that you can enjoy what you've been hoping for, then you have to be saying something. You're going to have to be saying something. Faith will bring hope into existence. Well, that's what Jeremiah said. He who has my word, God said, let him speak it faithfully. Why? Because you will have what you say. You will have whatever it is that you say. You have to be speaking the word, and there's another part of Speaking the word that is going to cause that to happen. See, faith without works is dead. It's dead. So what is it that we have to connect with the word I was speaking to get what we want into existence? What, what is the other part that is connected with that? I tell you what, go to Philippians 4, 6. You... In order, and this is the reason that a lot of time that people don't get what they're asking God for is because they forget to do this. Philippians 4, 6. Let's look at it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, 
with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. With thanksgiving, what does he say to do? Let your request be made known unto God. So what is the request? The request is your hope. Whatever it is that you're hoping for, whatever it is that you're believing God for, that you found a promise in this Bible, you found a promise here, okay? He said that if you find that promise, then you have, it's a chance that you will get what you are hoping for. It's a chance that you will get it. And there's a chance that you won't, just in case you don't know what to do. But when he said, make your requests, not just one, plural, make your requests known unto God. So therefore, he is telling us, ask me for what you want, as long as it's lining up with the word. Ask what you want, and it shall be done unto you. But, he said, I love this part, when he said, but with thanksgiving. And that's where so many people miss it. They forget to give the praise. They forget to give thanksgiving. They forget to give, get into it and honor him. And give thanks to him and praise him for what he has done. To give thanks to him for what he has done for you. And praise it because of who he is. And thanking him that he is able to do exceeding regardless of what it is you want. He is able to get it for you. He will, and he will do it as long as we're offering up the, the sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise. See, that's, you, you, the Bible says that when the earth praise you, O Lord, when they praise you, when the people praise you, O Lord, when they praise you, then the earth will, it gives up its increase. So he said, when you praise me, I'm going to give you that increase. When you praise me. That's the reason he said, don't be anxious for anything, but in all things through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, because it's your thanksgiving and your praise that is going to bring what you want into existence yes. so that you can enjoy it. Yeah, this is something that needs to be rehearsed. God told Joshua, he said, you rehearse, Moses, rehearse this in his ears. Don't stop rehearsing it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Why? Because he want him to get this thing down in his spirit to know this is what I'm saying is true. Don't, don't lose sight on this. And I, you can only get it in your spirit if I continue to put it out there and cause you to hear it and hear it. Because if I cause you to hear it, your faith is going to be built up. But if you're going to hear it one time, then you're not going to, you're not going to get what you need from God. You won't get what you want from God. It will not happen. Now let us look at Isaiah 57:19. Isaiah 57, 19. You have to be giving thanks and praise to him so he can create it. <laughs> he can create it when we give thanks and praise. Woo! I love that. I love it. Glory to God. Isaiah 57, 19. God said, number one, I'm on the count of three. One, two, three, read. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace, and to him who is near. And I will heal him. He said, I will create the fruit of your lips. Whatever you are saying, what are you, whatever you are consistently saying, whatever you are continuously saying, he 
God said this. He said, I will create that for you. This is the reason Jeremiah, he said in Jeremiah, he said, he who has my word, let him speak it faithfully. Amen. Keep right on saying it. Keep on saying it. He said, I want to create that for you so you can enjoy it in this life. Not in heaven. Because you too much to enjoy than to think about a car or a house. Too much to enjoy there that you've never seen before. But God wants to give us what we, he wants to give it to us. He really does. You know what he said? He said, I want to make the people out there jealous. Oh, yeah, that's what he said. He said, I want to make them jealous. That's the reason I want you to get everything that you want that I have given you so I can make them jealous so they can come to you and ask you, how did you do that? And once you tell them how you did it and what you need to do it with, he said, then they will accept me. They will accept me. Yeah. See, that's what he wants to do. He wants to make you jealous. I, uh, I remember one time <laughs> um, my son, just a little, probably not quite two years old, walking. And, uh, and I don't, there was another baby in that vicinity, wherever we were. And, and this baby father pick this other baby up. And do you know that other one that just went off? Uh -uh, uh -uh, that, you don't belong on his leg. That's my leg. <laughs> you know, just jealousy, even in a little two-year-old. Yeah, don't want, uh-uh, get down. It's all right as long as we stay on the floor here. Don't you be going over there. That's mine. Yeah, that's mine. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to make them jealous. To get him to come over to where he is. That's what he wants to do. Now go over to Hebrews 13, 15. Let's look at something. Hebrews 13. Woo! Let's look at number 15. He said, therefore, by him, by God, by Jesus, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. You know, the Bible said that the word of God will judge you. God say he judged no man. He said, but the word will judge you. The word will judge you. So when you read this right here, can you say, hey, I do keep this. I do do this. And if you can't, then you have been judged. And guess what? The time will come. When that thing that said nothing from nothing, leave nothing. Well, this is exactly what you get is nothing. He said here, therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. You know why people hate praise so much? They don't hate it. They just don't want to get into it. You know, it, it's, it's tiring to the flesh. They don't want to put up their hand. They don't want to sing. They don't want to praise and worship, you know, one of those things. Because the flesh is enmity against the things of God. The flesh is enmity against the work of God. The flesh hate the things of God and the things of God hates the flesh. So naturally, Satan ain't going to let you praise God. He's not going. But if we know that this is the case. The reason that we're not praising God, then we will stop it and get on the right path and go ahead on and do what your father God told you to do and offer up sacrifices. Sacrifices are not something easy to give up now. No, that means you have to crucify your flesh, your mindset. You have to bring those thoughts down. You have to bring them down and bring them into captivity and tell them what God said. Right. That's it. And
and then do what God said. Offer for sale. If you start small, even if you start small, Father, I just want to give thanks and praise to you in Jesus' name. I thank you for what you did for me yesterday. I saw what you had done for me. I thank you that you are my God and you are greater than Satan. You didn't let such and such happen to me. You had your angels watching over me, giving thanks and praise to God. That's what praise, would, it will help you out. Go to uh, Isaiah. No, 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 no. Hebrews 11, uh, Hebrews 10, 23. Let's look at Hebrews 10, 23. We're going to have to have the word of God coming out of our mouth at all time. At all time, because as you do, this is your faith talking. Your faith speaks. In Hebrews 10, 23, he said, let us hold fast the confession of our hope. What was your hope? Your hope is that you wanted a husband. You want a wife. You want children, you want finances, you want a house, you want a car, you want this, you want that. What is your hope that God has promised you? He says here, if you will hold fast to the confession of that promise, whatever it may be, if you will hold fast to it without wavering, without getting off course with it, just doing it every day, being faithful with it. God said, if you would do that, don't you love what he said? For he who promised you is faithful. He who promised you that hope, that husband, that wife, that car, that house, those children, whatever, that farm, Whatever it is that you want. He said, if you're faithful and holding fast to that promise, glory be to God. He said, I'm faithful who promised you, I'll give it to you. He said, I'll give it to you if you're faithful and holding fast to it. Meaning, keep saying it. Keep saying, Father, every time you get up in the morning, Father, I just want to thank and praise you that I, I have that car. I thank you, Father God, I got my wife. I thank you that I got my husband, Father. I just want to thank, Father, I got my husband. I got my wife. And I thank you for it, Father. And as a matter of fact, Father, you told me to put you in remembrance of what you said about it. And now I want to put you in remembrance, Father God, concerning what you said about my fiance, what you said about my spouse that I want. You said in Genesis 2.18 that it was not good that man should be alone. And you had made him a helpmate. You made him the woman. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Not only that, Father, but you said out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. So, Father, I found another one over here in 1 Corinthians 11, 8, where you said that you created the woman for the man and not the man for the woman. So I want to thank and praise you, Father God. I believe I receive my mate. He said, if you would do that faithfully, if you would do it faithfully, he said, he who has promised you is faithful and he'll bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Whoa. I get excited about it. You know why? Because I have filled my spirit up with it. And nothing but peace and joy just comes out of it. And every day, every morning, all during the day, just giving thanks and praise to my father. For I know he cannot lie. If he said it, he will do it. I've seen him do it before. And he will do it. You can't say it unless you got the word of God. In you, you can't, but you can get it there. You can get it there. Whenever you use your faith to say, because faith speaks. Does anyone know that to be the truth? Faith speaks. 
Roman 8, Roman 10, faith speaks. We said that faith is what? It's substance. Faith is something that you can feel, taste, touch. It's a natural thing. This, faith brought this into existence. Faith did. Okay? It's going to bring whatever you are hoping for. Whatever the promise is that you found in here that you want, faith is going to cause it to come and land on your doorstep. And you're going to open the box up, and lo and behold, you say, this is what I've been wanting. This is what I've been wanting right here. This is what, what did I say go? I didn't. Come on, y'all. Where did I, where was I supposed to be going? Romans 10. Oh, who is sleeping here? Who is sleeping here? Romans 10. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at this. You know something? Y'all got a devil to deal with. You hear me? And he's real. He's very, very real. He is as real as you are. Only difference between the two of you, you are born again and you are natural. You are physical and he is not born again and he is spirit. That's the difference. But guess what? He is the one that closes your mind. To everything that God is saying to you. He's the one that closes your mind and calls you not to hear. And then get you out there and try to whip you down. And beat you down in your mind. In your, in your thoughts. That's what he does for you. Let's look at it. Romans 10. Number 6. But the righteousness of faith. So right faith is righteous, right? It is of God because it's of God. Righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. So the righteousness of faith, which is of God, it does what? It speaks. In other words, it talks. It says something. Faith says something. And look at number eight. But what does it say? What does it say? It says that the word is near you. In your, in your what? You got to be saying something. You have to be saying what God said to you about that thing. Father, I just want to thank and praise you. Glory be to God. I have my I have my husband. I thank you, Father. As a matter of fact, Father, this is what you said about him. And I want to give thanks and praise to you that I have him. I thank you, Father God. He is a man. Father, I thank you that he loves to cook. He loves to clean. And he loves to do laundry. He loves all that stuff. Thank you, Father. You just, just hey, just put it down what you want. Just put, just request what you want. And don't, and don't be shy about it. Okay, because God is the one that turns hearts. Right. He turns the heart of man. The Bible said that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Yeah. And like the rivers of water, right. he turns it in the way that he wants it to go. God got your heart. God got your heart. God got your heart. Proverbs 21.1. God has your heart, and he got that other fellow's heart also. Right. He got his heart, so don't look at him. Right. He ain't got nothing going on. God got his heart, right. and God will turn that heart at any time he yeah. wants to turn it. As long as you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, God will turn his heart. Yeah. He'll do him like he did Nebuchadnezzar. Right. That's right. Nebuchadnezzar walking down the corridor one day talking and bragging about what he had done. Look at my kingdom. Look what I did. Look what I built. And look, and all of a sudden, the power of God came on him. Because he's bragging about what he did. And God told him, 
you are history for seven years and sent him out there in the field to eat grass like a dumb beast. That's what he did. But when he came to his senses after seven years, <laughs> I, can, I'm, I can hear him saying, let God be true and every man a liar. <laughs> yes, indeed. And he told everybody after that, God is the God and he works in the affairs of man. And he does. So he said, what does the word say? It is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth. See, we got to be saying what God said about the hope that we have. What, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with your mouth, your confession, what you are saying is made unto salvation, or it is made unto the physical, material matter, whatever it is that you've been hoping for. That's what it does. I think that's good news. That is good news. Only thing that it won't, that won't be good news for you if you look at it once or twice and then go away and forget it. You see, and especially if that promise is something you want. If, it, if it's something you want, then stay with that. Stay with that. Continue to Hebrews 11.23 uh, 1023, he said, hold fast to the confession of your hope. Now, what did Timothy say? Paul said in Timothy 6, 12, he said, now fight the good fight of faith. In other words, keep saying. You're going to get tired of saying, but keep saying it because words are created. Words are created. It, words is what brought the universe into existence. Words, God made everything from words. Let's look at Genesis 1. From word, words are important. They are our life. What we say and consistently say is what we wind up with. Words are your, they are your life. Please watch what you're saying because once you send them out there, it might be the last time. But keep saying what God said. Look at Genesis 1. He said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. I wonder with what? How did he do that? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God did what? He said something. Words now came out of his mouth. And God said, let there be light. And the words that he spoke created light. The words he spoke. See, this is the reason why words are paramount. Because they are creative. That's what they are. They are creative. They will take what you said and cause that thing to happen. You may not see it manifest right away. But if you continue to say it, you will see what you have been saying come into existence. You will, it will happen for you. And that's the reason you want to be always saying what God said about you. And not what you think. He said, don't lean on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge me. What did I say about you? Some people talk bad about themselves. Say what God said. 
Just say what God said. And when you say what God said, that's when he will perform his word. So he said, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Number six, he said, and then God said, let there be the firmament. And there it was. And number nine, he said, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together. And it happened. Look at number 11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass. The herd that yields seeds and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the earth that yields seed according to its kind, the trees that yield fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw it was good. And guess what? He said, good. Now, I'm going to put my word in my children's mouth. He said, I'm going to put my word in your mouth. Isaiah 59, 21. God said, my word that I'm putting in your mouth, let it not depart from your mouth. So he's telling you, stop saying what you want to say. Say what he said. Because if you say what he said, then he'll give to you what you're saying. But if you're saying what you said, you're going to be on your own. You'll have to make it happen yourself. But the word of God, he just said, is seed. And every word that you speak, it's a seed that you're sowing. And that seed that you are sowing, make no mistake about it. He said, Whatever, he said, as long as the earth remains, Genesis 8, 21, as long as this earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. In other words, you will reap what you are sowing. You will reap it. And then when you get it, don't cry and bawl and squall and wonder why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why didn't I get, why did I get that? Why did she get that? And I've been wanting it and I didn't get it. And why do they have this? And I don't, yeah, got to go back because everything is created by words. See what you've been talking Check up on your words. See what you've been saying and consistently saying because what you say is what you get. What you see is what you get. What you say consistently will be what shows up in your life. And you can't blame nobody. But yourself, the Bible said the day will come when the word that you have been speaking will judge you. It will judge you because it will come to pass. And the Bible say, and you and you alone will harvest it. Amen. Well, that's all I have for tonight.